No. No. Ja, like, like, no one's gonna see it. <laughs> no one's gonna see it. <laughs> Can I see a few more of those moves? Alright. Dee 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 dee. Dee dee. Dee dee. Dee dee. So loyal. Dee dee. Oh, he's so loyal. Dee dee. Protective. Dee 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 dee. One owner. Dini. Play fun. Dini. Dini. Good at companion. Dini. 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 You love them. Dini. Thank God that arm swiveled so well. What? Thank God that arm swiveled so well. Right? And that one too. Wow. test. Well, well, well. Tell everyone about the bad lighting. The bad lighting? If I look terrible, it's because of the bad lighting. Um, we were trying to shoot during the day. So here's our deal, guys. Real quick. Typically, we either have Laura's like super pimped out, like a little light ring that creates like like, just lights us from every angle with no shadows. And, yeah, but it, it like makes your teeth look whiter. Like it really, it's it's a it's a really badass light. And if we don't have that and we're traveling like this, then we've got natural light. Yeah. Luckily, this camera does really good with natural light. Problem is, we have been inundated with clients and all dogs day. and action and shenanigans all day long. Like literally. From, from the beginning, from, from the morning until now. Exactly. So we just, uh, we wrapped, we snuck in a quick little healthy dinner. Yeah, and well, um, healthy. Oh, you yeah. made a pepperoni pizza. Um, but you had a margarita. I'm not, gonna, I'm not exactly sure that like falls within like the Weight Watchers. Like. Oh no, I'm not saying I'm trying to do Weight Watchers. <laughs> I'm just saying you just had a healthy dinner. Yeah, I, I, I was lying. Oh, good. yeah, okay. yeah. We we, we didn't we, did, we didn't need a healthy dinner at okay. all, okay. and and that's like our what 18th time over at uh, Louisiana it's Pizza a lot Kitchen. Of pizza. So a lot of pizza. pizza, red beans, and rice. We're, we're fighting the good fight, but uh, we might be losing, right? Oh, cool news! I'm gonna be really really quick with this quick intro yeah. because this girl's gonna like <laughs> cut me off. No. So um, went to the uh, uh, World War II museum. Oh yeah! Been battling to drag this girl down there, and she got preemptive and actually got tickets. Actually got you tickets as a gift. I know it was very sweet. It was uh, honestly like I I really appreciated it. And so, but the cool thing was, I think it kind of surprised you, and you enjoyed it more than maybe you thought you might. I was amazed amazed at how much I enjoyed it because it wasn't like your typical museum. It was like Disneyland of museums. I it mean, was... it's really done up like a theme park. Yeah. I mean, there's no rides or anything like no. that. But but all the, like, when you're in the jungle, it feels like the jungle. You're in the jungle, yeah. And, and they, like, set it up in, like, the snow and just, like, there's the, the quality of the video that's going on and All the personal quality. stories, yeah. everything like that, all the Super artifacts. I think, I think for both of us, like, all the artifacts really ties it into to reality. Yeah. So, so that, fun. yeah, so that was really, really special, which, on Unfortunately, kind of like parlayed itself into a marathon session of watching Band of Brothers. Yes. So, oh, we've been staying up a little bit late. If anybody remembers Band of Brothers from back in the day, really awesome, awesome show with Easy Company. Uh, awesome show. Uh, awesome World War II, like almost like quasi document. What did they call it? Drama documentary yeah, yeah. or docudrama, something oh, yeah, like docudrama, that. Docudrama, yeah. And um, like done by Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> Wow, done by Spiel Stevenberg and by um, Tom Hanks and produced by those guys. Yeah. And so lots of dough, big budgets and yeah. just done really well. And like everybody that came out of there, like, yeah. 
yeah, shot out of actress. cannons like yeah. big stars. So we've been going through that. We're six episodes in. We got to try and like hustle. We're going to be able to see the rest. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's that. The, I highly recommend anybody who gets down to, New or down to New Orleans, definitely go see the World War II Museum. Yeah. It's not stuffy. It's not no, uptight. It's not it's not a room full of like pictures, framed pictures with white walls. It's like, no, I mean, it's, it's all the artillery, it's all the guns, and yeah. it's all the stories, and it really leads you down the path of how everything's kind of come together and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and how it's all led up to that point, yeah. that critical point, which is so fascinating. So check it out. Excuse me. Pretty cool. Yeah. And okay, upcoming workshop, right? Bling bling, can we can we link it? Link bling, away, yes. Link away, link away. Uh -huh. We're getting close, right? What we got end of September yep. for for Nola. End of September. Man, and you guys want to come visit and hang out with us in Nola? You could go to the World War II Museum. Oh my gosh, two for you one. You could like put it all together. Um, so, workshops coming up. We're super excited about it. It's gonna be a good time. Definitely. Lori, you can tell us very excited about it, but she's she's oh trying to hold exhausted. herself back a little bit. Uh, um, just been client with clients for seven hours. So. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a really long day. Yeah. But and you even had a couple like chai latte teas to try and like try fuel the tanks and yeah. and uh, I did some cappuccino like serious madness and it didn't really do much good. Um, the answer to last week's question, too shy shy, lots of fancy folks managed to answer it. Kaja Gugu, uh, a terrible name, but a band who wrote a very beautiful little hit and, uh, and had some exquisite hair. Um, apparently, I got dogged out by, I can't remember her name, for not knowing Betty with the big hair. Is that what it is? Betty. Becky with the good hair. Becky with the I like Betty with the big hair, right? Reminds me of the 50s. So, all right, I got stuff to learn, okay? Right? Get off my back. I'm coming. I'm coming for all of you guys. So, um, anyways, what else we got? Um, okay, so before we jump into the actual show, I want to answer a really quick question. I think I I'd like you, you to kind of help. This is from our good friend, uh, friend David. And David, is, is he, sent, is he um, located in Venice or? He does like West Side, yeah, like walking stuff. In, in, that, in that area, yeah. right? Beach yeah. cities, uh, a lot of Venice stuff. He does great dog walking, structured walks. He studied the crap out of what we do. And uh, he understands, you know, the thresholds and the crate work and the structured walk. And he uses the tools that we use oftentimes. And uh, he's just really good at what he does. And he cares a heck of a lot about doing a great job. And so David's question really quick was mainly, and I'm going to paraphrase. I mean, I'm going to have Laura read it. But it was basically about going into like a sp the specific home where the two dogs, when he goes in, they're on e-collars, but they're all just revved up crazy. They're just out of their trees. He tries to correct them at low levels and like puts them in a down, but they're still seething. They're still like, they're still vibrating, you know? Um, and, and maybe even, um, what is that called? Where you, uh, not elevate, but you um, help me. I don't know, elevate. Uh, you know, like if you were going to like, um, like a, a magician's trick, and you were going to have like the the the, the lady. Okay, so somebody will hopefully uh, add that in and finish that sentence for me. Levitate. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, levitate. So, um, and I don't know what the hell I was talking about. Where did levitate come from? I have no idea. Anyways, so back to Debbie. Um, Oh, I was just talking about le the dogs levitating, just being out of their trees, right? right? And so the main point of this is that I want for you, David, and then anybody else out there in the dog world that's like dog walking, dog training, foster, rescue, whatever, you got to keep a certain amount of hold on uh, realistic expectations, right? So I don't want you guys out there thinking that like because we do what we do and like you know dogs come out and do great work and blah 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 that we don't face challenges that we don't face limitations that we don't face a ceiling with dogs that we don't have dogs that don't get to where we want to get like the reality is is that dogs are imperfect and especially if you're going into people's homes where they've created all of the patterns and all the associations and you walk in and the dog knows the association immediately is like you take me for a walk and it's like right so you're talking about like waiting the dogs out doing the crate exercise doing thresholds not letting them pull you're doing everything amazing you're yeah. doing all the great stuff 
but I, I'm telling you, my friend, you gotta, you gotta be able to let yourself off the hook as well. Do your highest level work, and then also let yourself be like, they're dogs. Mm -hmm. They're dogs that don't live with me, so I can't cultivate everything. They're dogs that live with other people who are probably patterning and reinforcing things that you don't want that are working against you. So for you and anybody else, let's take ourselves off the hook. Doesn't mean don't do your best work, but let's take ourselves off the hook and let's do our best work. And then whatever doesn't like add up, you got to let yourself off the hook a little bit. And you know, like I know Dr. you work with some of our clients mm -hmm. and like in particular, I'm thinking some of one client and they do awesome work with their dogs. So it's not necessarily that the, the people that you're seeing aren't necessarily keeping things up, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you don't live with a dog all the time, it doesn't matter. Like when dogs come in for boarding, we've trained them and we know them well, they can come in for boarding and start acting a fool right away. Like for just to like going into their crate and acting nutty and doing stuff. It's just because we don't live with them daily. So like I know there's, there's there's one couple of dogs that you deal with that are clients of ours that are like they're pretty challenging dogs yeah. and the owners are so awesome so you just need to know that like you might have to work a little harder because you only see them once a day but i will tell you that if you do work a little harder and you really mean it because you also have like you have a really good heart and you've got some patience and you've got all that good stuff that you need to be a great dog walker but you also may need to like, okay, I'm coming in and I'm gonna run this thing pretty good. You know, like I want them to like, you walk in and they're excited to see you, but also like, okay, he's the guy who like really runs the show. Yeah. So definitely like, just remember that, you know, it's not gonna be perfect because you're like a pinch hitter, but also you might need to lay down the law a little bit firmer than just like an everyday, like your own dogs, yeah. because you're only coming in for a little bit per day. Right, which means that the the association with you is singular. Just happy stuff. <laughs> oh my God, you take me to Disneyland every day, right? So you gotta really hold on to that and, and not put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. Do your best work, but you also have to have realistic expectations about what you can create when they're not the dogs that you live with. And like Laura said, sometimes that might take higher consequences in order to bring them down, things like that, but there's not always an easy answer. Mm -hmm. So that's for you, and that goes out for any Anybody else that's in the dog walking world, training world, rescue, whatever, like let's keep our expectations appropriate while we shoot for big, big stuff. Absolutely. Don't beat the hell out of yourself because you can't like create calm assertive energy in a yeah. dog, you know? Right. It's like the dog lives 20 something else hours with their owners and they're out of their tree. So uh, oftentimes, not, yeah, always. not always. I know Laura was just saying like a lot, a lot of owners are great, but a lot of owners slip yeah. and a lot of owners are permissive and allow a lot of like little moments to go by that load up. So anyways, I just want to share that it's you're, you're not in one of our big questions, but I didn't want, I didn't want to let that one pass. Cool. So anyways, thanks. Do you have anything to add before I jump into the show? I don't. Hit it. Excellent. Hey everybody, it's Sean from The Good Dog. And to my right is the lovely Laura Morgan. Yes. Yes. And everything that you see kind of well, like you can't really see, but there's like pizza boxes and salads and dogs and, place. Dogs and they're still there. <laughs> yep, that's good news. And all sorts of uh, all sorts of like you know little knickknacks laying around. All that stuff makes up the Good Dogs Q and A Saturday episode number ninety eight. Whoa! Boom. Did you go? Boom! Awesome. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Um, any nails you want to show? No, nothing special. Today. You're just. You're still on the. Uh, still on the neutral. The train. neutral train. Well, that's because we're filming this, guys, on a Monday. This is the earliest because I go home tomorrow. So we're filming this show really early. Do you guys get the commitment level? Do you really get the commitment level? So here's the deal. Busiest day probably of our whole trip. Maybe, Definitely, right? Definitely, yeah. Busiest, busiest trip and, and of course stayed up too late watching Band of Brothers. But <laughs> so not a lot of sleep. Busiest day, tons of clients. And I woke up this morning and I was like, oh my God, Q&A Saturday. Laura's going to be home. I will still be here. We'll be toast. Mm -hmm. So, so we had to kind of like you throw it together. Right. Yep, yep, throw it together because why? Because we're here. Because we're here for you guys. Love for you guys. All right. So, with that, I would love to jump into the first question if you don't mind. Sounds good. Yep.
Shepherd. See, like a typical actor. Once the camera's rolling, you can't stop. She's like, I'll do it one more time. All the way through. <laughs> okay. I need a high chair. Grandma pillows. I know. This right? Couch is really it's sinky. It's, it, it's sinky and, and cozy, but like it doesn't work for like Not every for every yeah. every kind of situation. Okay. <laughs> from like slouching. My stomach hurts. <laughs> okay. Question number one. Yep. This comes from Robbie. Robbie says, I have a five-year-old Wheaton Max, and he's a super lazy guy. Yep. I had some leash reactivity to dogs, so I was really working on heel with a prong collar as well as place and recall. Uh -huh. We are in our early stages, and I find after working with him for maybe 10 minutes, he gets somewhat sluggish and doesn't really want to participate in the training. Uh -huh. He just sort of lays down. He loves the walks and heel and is really into that and has been doing great. But how do I get his excitement up so he's a bit more of a participant? I also have a dog to IQ that we got to address some barking on a while back, but I mm -hmm. never used it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I learned after watching your videos. Um, I want to start working with that, but I'm really having trouble finding a working level. I get up to 20, 25, and I can't seem to get good indicators, and I don't mm -hmm. want to go too high finding his level. Yeah. Sorry for the two-parter. Thanks for all the resources. They've made me feel so empowered as I go down this training journey. Wow. How cool. So nice, Robbie. How cool. Yeah. And he snuck in a two-parter. Uh, very clever <laughs> work. Good. Yeah, good for you. All right. So first of all, uh, Robbie, thanks so much for the kind words. We really appreciate it. Glad that we've been able to help and maybe clarify some of the e-collar work for you. Yeah. So that's great news. Um, okay, so let's talk about the motivation stuff first. Um, not every dog comes out of the, the womb um, with a lot of like juice, a, a lot of like, Excitement, a lot of motivation. Some dogs are, are thrilled to work for a handler and it means the world to them. You touch, pet, engage with them and they're over the moon. Some dogs food and they're like, boom, they're gone. Some dogs toys, right? Um, you could have, I, I don't know if you've tried all those things, but I would if you're really looking for more motivation mm -hmm. um, and try different toys. Try mm -hmm. like tennis balls, try like tug, try things like that. Um, yeah, if he's a good dog. I mean, if he's a good dog and you're just learning like obedience. Stuff. Yeah, it, I think he is. I don't, yeah, I don't think, like I don't think yeah. they've got like major problems yeah, or anything. Yeah. I think he's just trying to train him. Yeah. And what he's finding is that like after 10, 15 minutes, he's just kind of sluggish. Yeah. Now, and here's the thing is that it's not that uncommon, right? So you're basically asking your dog to do probably some pretty mundane tasks. Yeah. You're probably like, come on, place, lay down. Your dog's like, wow, we've done this a million times, right? So um, once again, you can go with affection and see how, what that gets you. Toys, see what that gets you. Food, see what that gets you. But then you also might have the wild card number four, which means you might just have a very unmotivated dog. I mean, I would say Manny is a great example. Like my guy Manny, he's not, I mean, if we brought some food out, he'd probably get a little bit more jazzed up. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how long that would even last because he's, he, you know what I mean? Like his priorities, yeah. his priorities are like, I really want to eat, but. Pillow. Uh, I think Soft I'd like to. Stuff. I think I'd like to lay down. I'd like to sleep. And Hercules, Hercules. Herc's on that same tip. Yeah. yeah. So not every dog is built for that, and that's why like people that do like high end, like like really fancy training stuff, it's all genetic stuff. They're looking for genetic material, drive like dogs. dogs that are just like drivey, built to like go go go. Yeah. So. That, that could be a problem. You could be dealing with a dog that just doesn't come with a lot of that stuff naturally. But if you haven't tried the other motivators, try them and see what you get. Um, and like Laura said, it's a super important point. If you're trying to work through behavior modification or any bad, uh, inappropriate behavior, then creating more drivey stuff is going to work against yeah. you. If he's a great dog and an easy peasy and you just want more fun and action out of him, then go down and yeah. check that out. Now, next. Um, Oh, I was going to say, the reason you say he's great on the walk, why do you think that is? The reason he's great on the walk is because the walk has all of this um, fulfillment for him. Yeah, yeah. The walk is exciting, it's novel, it's fun, he gets to explore, he gets to do all this. The work inside your house or your backyard typically is going to be something that's going to be far less novel, far yeah. less interesting, far less fascinating. So a lot of dogs are like, cool, the walk, that's great. So most likely that's why the walk is giving you a different thing, so don't let it confuse you. It's yeah. just he's getting he's getting a payoff from yeah. that. Now, beyond that, um, I want to, like maybe the, maybe the two of us 
this can uh, help problem solve. Sorry. <laughs> so maybe the um, um, can maybe we can try and help solve the uh, working level issues that he's oh, yeah. got, right? So <laughs> basically, you've got a Wheaton, mm -hmm. pretty furry. We've had several Wheatons in, mm -hmm. and contact hasn't always been easy, mm -hmm. right? So what I'd like to do is just kind of run down the list of like some of the issues that you could be having. For one, I think we we remember pretty clearly that the dog to IQs. It's like 20 when the dogs do start to feel it. It's, right? It's hard. It's it like, was between 17 and 20 yeah, almost always. across the board. Yeah, and so that's why we, we do love the e-collar technologies because we can really find the difference. I mean, at that, right. like we had a dog feel it at one the other day. Yeah. And then we have dogs that feel it on a, on an e -collar, six or seven. On an e-collar yeah. mini educator feeling it at one. Yeah, so you just, I, I think 20 to 25 is kind of like your standard range. Um, so if you're... If it's really hot, for, if the dog's like, whoa, with that, then maybe go a little lower. Make sure that you're, you're getting, you know, skin He's not getting any reaction. At 20, 25? Nope, nothing. Uh, so he's afraid to go higher. Is the, is the neck moving? That's, this is all part of kind okay. of like the diagnostic yeah, yeah. portion of our show. So you want to check out mm -hmm. these few things. We want to see contact points. Make sure that your dog isn't like one of those really furry Wheatons. If he is, there's something called thick fur contact points that the e-collar.com sells. Mm -hmm. They're literally called thick fur. Um, and they work like a charm. They work like a charm. You can get those. They fit on the dog tres. Um, then the other thing to check is make sure the collar's snug enough. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to check is like you can always pull the fur out from underneath the contact points. Mm -hmm. The other thing to check is if the if the neck or the the leg or the like chest is kind of like moving. So if your dog's stoic and is like, I feel that, but it doesn't really bother me, or I'm not going to like make a reaction, but their body's showing it. Make sure you're watching that too. I can't tell you how many times when we've been doing workshops or training dogs, and and people are like, Yeah, my dog doesn't feel anything, and I tell them to come stand on the side where the receiver is on their dog's neck and they tap maybe they're at six or seven and they can actually see the neck go yep that's where you start yeah right so keep a really close eye on like stand on the side where your dog's receiver is and watch it and watch it like a hawk and see if you're getting any motion right there now if you're not and if you've tried all these contact points and tried all this different stuff and the strap is really tight one of the other big big uh, um, uh, problem solvers is to shave a spot on the neck yeah, just like and and that trim. makes yeah like if you if you trim trim down or shave uh, a nice little rectangle on your dog's neck it makes it pretty much foolproof mm -hmm. to make sure that you're getting great contact and then at least you know what you're getting yeah and then you're like okay cool he works at 25 or crap at eight now he's reacting right. so that would be uh that would be our suggestions yeah. for for sorting that out keep us posted and let us know how it goes yeah and also real quick with the with the work with the dog thing you don't want to like burn him out on work you yeah. know so like if he's like if 10 minutes typically what we do once the dog kind of knows interior stuff just like if it's just on prong, just like a couple reps to place and stuff like that. Doesn't have to be a marathon. And then just duration work. It doesn't have to be all these reps because some dogs are just like not excited about it. And if they're good dogs, like don't burn them out, you know, have yeah. some fun with it, but then just kind of cut it. Like don't, don't ask too much, especially if your dog's not any behavior issues. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. Cool. All right. Let us know. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, Britt. Quick. All right. Okay, guys, so this is what we have to do. <laughs> this, I can't do it. We're not doing it. We can't do it. We can do it after. We can do it after. Yeah, we can do it after. We can do it after. Yeah. Do it after. Good. Do so we just need to find out what this dog is. It's a pity. I really have all this stuff. Like, yeah, we know all about this guy. Good. We've got a pity who is dog aggressive. Um, we need to. <laughs> No. Question number two. We already don't know the stinking notes. Question number two comes from AI Matsumiya. I'm sure it's like I. Yeah, probably. But I just like AI because yeah. that reminds me of that movie. Artificial intelligence or something? Yeah, yeah. almost said insemination, but that was probably a different movie altogether. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I, I got lost for a second. 
Okay, AI says, hello guys, thank you for, and, and, yeah, thank you for doing this show. It really helps and gives me encouragement. At least I got you to laugh. I am eight months pregnant and my husband and I want my dog Lobo to pass the CGC test, mm -hmm. and test to be a service dog before the little one comes out into the world. Uh -huh. We've been training Lobo by ourselves since he was a pup. He's smart, can follow all the basics, but I have low hopes of how, have having him pass the test at the end of the year and I'm desperate and mm. I really need your help. The biggest task and maybe the only task is to make Lobo get used to let people touch him, pet him, groom, check his ears and teeth. If people ask to pet him on the street, he becomes nervous and starts to growl. Mm -hmm. We've taken private dog training classes lately and the trainer suggested give him treats when having a stranger pet him to give him a positive association. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so she's just she's doing a little bit of that. Seems a long way to go to tell he's okay with being brushed. I think he's very sensitive being touched by people, but he's also protective, mm. trying to be calm, assertive, and a good leader. I'm also concerned he'll become protective when the baby joins the family. I know it's Sheba's nature to be independent and not interested in people except his family. Yeah. Um, but since he has a puppy face, people keep asking if they can pet him. Okay. All right. I. A I. I. Um, let's get this rolling. Okay, so your priority is obviously going to be with making your home safe for your baby and, and getting your dog to be more comfortable in your presence because not only could the addition of the baby make him more protective over your family, but could possibly make him protective over you to the baby if there's anything going on like that. Yeah. It's always yep. a possibility. Yep. So your priority is not to the CGC. It's not to getting your dog who's uncomfortable with people to be pet by people. My dog is totally comfortable being pet by people but I could count on one hand the amount of times that I allow people to actually pet him in a public setting. Like, here, go ahead, pet him and-, and Why? What's that? Why is that? I was just about to say. Because I just don't like putting him in an uncomfortable position. I don't like putting him in a place where he's not, possibly could be uncomfortable. He's yep. really social and really good with people, but it's, it, it's uncomfortable to have a bunch of people like come up and, and touch you and be people like, people you don't know, space. you've got no familiarity with, yeah. no relationship. And they're going to like, all these people like, because it's a Shiba, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, do you know what it feels like to be a dog that's like, Constantly I'm not into pressured. this? Yeah, yeah, it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, he's yeah. literally getting pressured all the time. And the CGC to me is great for nice, stable dogs that don't really care about anything and are cool. and. But that test is not going to make your dog safe. Like getting him to be able to pass that test isn't going to make him safe. So I think your priority should be less about that test and much more about like getting him just comfortable in general with you, not putting too much undue pressure on him. Because the other thing is that if you're in the place where he's always getting undue pressure, mm -hmm. his trust with you starts to erode. Yep. So more and more he's like, gosh, she keeps putting me in these situations. And typically what we see are dogs that become more proactive with that. If you keep getting put in it, mom's not taking care of it, you know what? Bite. So I don't I don't think you need to worry about the test. If you're trying if the if the goal is to make him a service dog so you can like bring him places, um I don't know. To me, you don't have a dog at this point who is like Cut out for cut it. Cut out for that at mm -hmm. all. And and so you can't like, you know, you can't force him to be something he's not. Can you train him and make him totally more comfortable in general so he can go public places with you and be around people and be more comfortable, but still you have to put the limits on? Mm -hmm. Of course, like we do that all the time, but getting him to pass a test and getting him to be able to go anywhere with you, like you have to remember that other people are at stake if there if there is going to be if there could possibly be a bite or something. Can I jump in? Please go for it. Thanks. I think the canine good citizen test mm -hmm. is a bunch of malarkey. Mm -hmm. I really do, guys. I, and and uh, you know, my girl Belle had to pass it in order to go in and do like um, therapy work. But to be honest, I think 
so many people get caught up in the canine good citizen test as being like Laura was saying, kind of like this plaque or this uh, this uh, this medal or this like um, uh, 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 endorsement is a better word um, of your dog's safety, stability, yeah. security, all of this stuff. And I think it's a bunch of crap. Yeah. The, the the test is is not the best thing for a lot of dogs. Like Laura's saying, the best thing for your Sheba is to be led by you, protected by you, and not put in harm's way by you. Right. You want a dog that's not territorial, that's not being growly and snotty with strangers, then great, protect him, lead him, guide him, mm -hmm. give him consequences for poor choices, don't let him be territorial, lay down the law, that's, I mean, like, I, I wrote you a really quick note that I want to make sure that I cover before I jump out of here. And it's really like, for one, I said it's unfair to expect every dog to enjoy being touched um, by strangers. Yeah. I mean, that just across the board, we see it constantly and we see that friction of owners that are like, but I want my dog to be like, that's great, and I want my kid to be able to be like the next Mario Andretti, but that doesn't mean he's going to be. Mario Andretti is a race car driver. I know that. Okay. Well. From uh, the, isn't there a Sheryl Crow song that talks about Mario Andretti? Maybe. Some, Maybe. Some, yeah, yeah, some yeah. singer. Okay. Or a Kaja Gugu song. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, that, that I really do feel that is unfair to say, like, my child or my dog has to be this because this is what I want. Mm -hmm. I think that's super unfair. Um, so here's what I'd give you. I'd say I'd up the leadership, structure, rules, and I'd dramatically lower the affection, freedom, and I would completely remove being touched by strangers. You want to make your dog solid? Follow those simple rules and watch what your dog will do. Forget the canine good citizen test. You want a safe dog? Do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where you get a safe dog. So uh, I, I know I cut you off, but if there's no, anything no. else you want to say. No, I have nothing more to say. I just don't, I don't think that those, I think people think one equals the other. Once he gets to the test, then he'll be cool. He's a safe dog. Yeah, and yeah, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't buy it. And, and I've seen a lot of dogs that have passed the CGC <laughs> that are actually like dangerous. Yeah. And they're okay with getting pet by people and checked on their ears <laughs> and all that stuff. But they certainly will snap or bite or go after another dog or attack yeah. dog. Like It's just not an endorsed. It's not an endorsement of safety, guys. Yeah. It really isn't. And it might be something like a medal that's like nice to, to like kind of wear yourself and be like, yeah, my dog passes canine good citizen yeah. test, but it really doesn't mean crap. No. So Manny hasn't passed his canine good citizen test, but he's like one of the safest dogs. He'd let anybody yeah. touch him. He'd let anybody groom him. He'd yeah. let anybody do anything. Yeah. So like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So I hope that helps. Yeah, cool. Thanks. No. <laughs> just look really serious, okay? All right, guys. Seriously? Come on, guys. Let's just, go. just no. nod, nod, Henri. Like, yeah, got it. Cool. Got it. We've got question number three. It's a tough one. Tough one. Hold on to your. This comes from Becky. She says, "I have huge hats." In the morning, I have a huge issue with my roommates bringing in their friends. Yeah. Both my dogs do not see my roommates as part of the family and pack, and every time they come in, both dogs bark at them. But the problem is my seven-year-old lab. He uh -huh. charges the door, although he doesn't bite them. He has nipped one of their friends coming in, and then two weeks ago, he built bit a six-year-old child coming in with them. Uh -huh. The child needed stitches, and now this lab has a bite record. Uh. I've told the roommate before that the dog isn't good with kids. Outside, he'll try to hide behind me from them and bark, but in the house, he's very protective. In the uh -huh. past, we had a kid in the house, and he stayed away from him until the kid was squirming on my lab and crying and he charged at him. I knew then he was a danger and since then, um, until two weeks ago, not in my control, we haven't had kids in the house. Oh wow. I have court in the middle of September over this. I'm distraught. I have trained both dogs outside and they're perfect, but inside they need work, especially the lab. I seem not to be able to get him to stop being protective of the house, especially when other people are here. If I'm home, I'm able to let people in with boundaries, but no one else in the house seems to want us or is capable of trying. Okay, yeah. Oi, that's a hard one. So, I have some pretty strong feelings about this, Becky, and um, I, I don't want it to come across harsh or being mean, but uh, I sound like Jeff Gelman, but um, the, the truth of the matter is, is that you're setting all of this up. Uh, let's just be clear, and you're gonna be like, no, it's my dogs. But just like I posted a couple weeks ago, you get what you allow. 
right? So what's going on in your home is being allowed by a lack of structure, lack of leadership, a lack of rules, a lack of consequences, all of that stuff, lack, a lack of accountability. So your dogs are running roughshod because there's no clarity in the pack structure in your home. And in addition to that, I did a little bit of snooping around on your Facebook page and it's all legal. I'm not like doing anything dastardly or anything like that, but I, I, I'm, I'm not hacking. <laughs> I've been accused of hacking, but I, I'm, I'm not hacking. Um, but basically, because I, I, I like to see who I'm, who I'm dealing yeah, with, yeah. It, it helps give me We're more insight. Here, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I looked, and to be perfectly frank, like I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call a spade a spade, I saw oodles of pictures of you and your dogs um, in, in what looks to be very, very, very... <laughs> cuddling, coddling, babying, mama's cradling, boy. Mm -hmm. mama's boy, even like titles of stuff. Everything points to like dogs being spoiled, babied, mommied. Um, uh, They're my babies. Uh, sort of yeah, yeah. Taking, I mean like there's pictures of the dog like on the lap upside down. There's pictures of the dog by the bed. I mean like, and I'm not trying to like nail you for this, but what. That's fine if your dog's not nervous. This is the thing like you've got the dog is telling you so much when you say he's outside and he's barking and hiding behind your legs. That's such a nervous, Huge. comfortable dog. So you say that they're, they're trained outside but bad inside. That's not trained outside. If the dog's seeing kids and nervous about them enough to be barking and hiding behind your legs, nope. that's not a comfortable dog. Nope. So what we're saying is like cuddling and all that stuff, like. Go ahead as long as your dog comfortable, stable, and not biting or not charging or not lunging or not afraid. So just to just Yeah, I mean the, the, the best way to ensure that you get all this stuff, like when we go into homes or, or people bring their dogs over, there's always this this thread that runs through this kind of like dynamic. Mm -hmm. And it's a gigantic, immense, like swallowing the universe black hole of a leadership gap. Mm. It's, it's, it's a lack of clarity in where the dog sits, where the human sits, and because of our love, nurturing, affection, care, uh, desire to connect with our animals and enjoy them in this certain capacity, we create all of this lack of clarity about where our dogs sit, and it creates stress, anxiety, poor choices, and a ton of possessive territorial stuff, which is exactly what you're getting. Yep. So if I lived in your house, I can bet you any amount of money that within five days, I could have anybody walk in that house. That's because you're a dog trainer. Uh, it, it is, but it's because I, un it, it, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> it's, it's also because I understand the dynamic yeah. of how to put dogs into a good space to where they feel comfortable, safe, but they also feel inhibited about shitty choices. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I, I just want to read a la the last couple things to you and then I'll kind of let you off the hook. And that's your dogs are out of control because they're not trained and because you're not leading them properly, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to like turn this around, then get, we have to kind of explain the, the, the training lifestyle kind of overhaul, overhaul, overhaul. Do you want to give a quick little like overview of what you would say for Becky if Becky called you up on the bat phone and was like, Laura, I've got like biting going on. What do I need to do to turn this around? Well, I mean, we would talk about a full program, like everything. Give a brief, brief, okay. brief. Start to finish e-collar program, place, recall, heal, Thresholds, crate, tons of structure. You meaning? No, no free roaming in the house together. I, I, I feel for you because I know you're in a situation where you've got a house that you can't always necessarily control. But a lot of clients of ours are like kids where their family is like they're up against their family that doesn't want to do training with the dogs. So the dogs like when they're at school, they're not a lot like school meaning like college you know they're yeah. living at home the dog's out and they can't control the dog then what we give is like hey if you're not around watching and supervising and training and working with the dogs dogs are in crates in your room if you have roommates and that's what you're dealing with they have to be put away because if you're not there to supervise it's really hard a to tell roommates that don't care about it to to care but also to like 
have that responsibility on them when they're not, they're just inviting friends and it's, it's their not home their dogs. too. Yeah. yeah. So when you're not supervising, dogs are put away. When you're out supervising, you know the situation, you know what's going on, they're working and they're not on your lap, they're not on the couch, they're not like doing anything like that, they're working. And that's not for forever, but that's for now to get the balance back. I'd ask you to ask yourself, I'd ask you to ask yourself a really, really honest question. Do you believe in all honesty that you are leading, guiding, creating structure, authority, accountability, and consequences anywhere near the level of affection, freedom, doting, coddling, babying, cradling? Do you, do you, you have to ask yourself yeah. that question. And if you're like, screw you, Sean, you have no idea what I'm doing, awesome. Then, <laughs> then great, do your thing. But I, I, I think if you're really honest with yourself, like those pictures are telling. Yeah. Those pictures, that's why I was snooping, because Facebook never lies. And you ask us for, for the honest stuff, so we have to yeah, give you like, the there's, best stuff. It doesn't do us any good, and it doesn't do you any good for us to give you some bull crap and be yeah. like, yeah, everything's gonna be great if you just right. keep throwing chicken at them. No, 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 no. Your relationship is your major problem, and training, lack of training, is the other part of the yeah. equation. Yeah. So, cool. please go knock it out. If yeah. you it, like, if you want to keep your dog from like being put to sleep because he's already got a bite record, you got to do everything you can to get your stuff shored up and put it together. Because all you, I think it's you know two strikes and I think you're out. Mm. All right, let us know. Okay, thanks. Good luck. And in this rant, I want to talk about. No one has perfect dogs. I had to check. Hey everybody, these are Sean's rants. And in this rant, I want to talk about... Fuck, I can't remember when I can say it. Let's try it again. Go ahead. Whoop. Hey everybody, these are Sean's rants. And there's a big piece of dust flying by. Okay, question number four. This comes from... Debra. Hey Debra. Debra says, hey, I have a five month old Yorkie puppy named Lexi. She's so Hi, wonderful. Lexi. <laughs> She's the profile picture. <laughs> of course she is. <laughs> She's so wonderful, except every evening she starts biting and chewing on me. Lexi. I've bought tons of chew toys and treats, which she chews on, but she still wants to bite and chew me. I have tried everything I know of and nothing works. The more I tell her no, the more bossy she gets. She will start barking at me and then bite, so I usually end up putting her in her bed and her kennel. Is there anything else I can do? Any help would be appreciated. By the way, any other time of the day, she's the most lovable and playful puppy ever. I bet. I bet. Okay, Lexi. okay. All right. So, you ready to hit me with the clock? Hit it. So, this is a great example of management versus addressing. I just wrote about this the other day. This, you're, you're, you're describing perfectly, exactly one million percent the difference between like trying to manage a situation or addressing and stopping it. Yeah. Putting a dog in a crate, moving a dog away, telling a dog no, all of these things that don't have any real consequences, any teeth in them, mm -hmm. are going to continue the behavior, right? So let's start off with that. So this is a great example of a consequence continuing and encouraging behavior. And I remember a very famous, long-haired, poorly dressed gentleman who said, whatever you don't say no to, whatever you allow, you're training. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're basically doing. Um, who was that guy? Was it Jess, Jess Gilman? Gilman? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and um, sorry. Sorry guys, we'll be right back. Um, so, so oh, Jeff. That, was, that was good timing, good timing. You, we, we got a little thing. Anyways, so without consequences, right, you just encourage the behavior and I hope you get that. And I know your intent isn't to do that. So yeah. you're saying, I'm giving her bones and chews and da 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 and telling her no, but you know what? There's no consequence in any of that stuff. Yeah. All you're doing is like the famous redirect. Let's give the dog something else to focus on, but you never tell the dog no, right? That's like me speeding down the freeway at 90 miles an hour, and the cop's like, let's pull off the off-ramp. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool. And he's like, okay, now you can go ahead. 
I'm like, okay, cool, and I take off again, right? There's no consequence. Right. He just like delay of game, right? right he just right. like here, come over here. That's so, funny. so th that's not going to get you anywhere. You want to get this fixed, like, and I know you're going to bristle at this, or there's a real good chance you're going to bristle at this, and a lot of other people. It's a five month old, five month old Yorkie, so it's a young dog. It's a Yorkie, which is cute, and it's small, and everybody's going to be like, but you can't do anything, like, because he's such a small, cute little dog. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If this dog is mouthing and chewing and, and raising hell, he's probably only going to get worse. Yep. I would get a 2.25 Herm Springer prong collar. What? And I would get collar. And I would get a leash. And I would watch any one of like my, Jeff, or Tori's videos on how to fit a prong collar, but especially ours because they're the best, and fit that prong collar appropriately. The 2.25 is really small. It'll be great for your little Yorkie. He'll mm -hmm. love it. He'll feel like a man with it on. And get it nice and snug. A little tiny leash, you can use like a little vet leash, you know, and cut it just, or string, just something really light, so he's not even thinking about it. And the next time that the little Yorkie goes to do a little nibble-ski, nibble-ski, mm -hmm. all you do is say no and give him a pop on the prong collar. Right. And you do that pop at say two. And then what does your dog do? He continues to mouth. Oh, then we go to four. No, pop. pop. And he goes, eyes big as saucers. What was that? And you're like, yeah, stop, stop biting, biting me. Quit it. <laughs> and if four doesn't work, you go to six, pop, find the level, let the dog tell you what works. Yes. I'm telling you, within minutes, 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 not days, not weeks, not months, not years, not any of the silliness, it can be done in minutes, in one day, get it done. Especially Have with a sweet, easy dog. Yeah, or light. even not a sweet, easy dog. Well, no, but I'm just saying, like, if if the dog is kind of just light, like all the time, and is like really in a play, like mouthing. Yeah. First of all, that stuff can turn really bratty, especially when they're not a cute little puppy anymore. Uh huh. And it can turn into like really bratty, entitled stuff. Like I do whatever I want, and mm -hmm. no one tells me what to do. But also, like right now, if the state of mind's are pretty like mild, a good little correction, the dog will be like, oh, okay, can't do that anymore. Here's the deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint this black and white. You ready yeah. for it? Mm -hmm. You holding on? Always. Make chewing and mouthing uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If you have to use a squirt bottle, which I don't recommend, if you have to use a bonker, which I think is way more complicated, if you have to use a prong car and leash, which I think is the best way to go, mm -hmm. do it and get it done yeah. and enjoy your dog a whole hell of a lot more yeah. than being annoyed by your dog. You're saying your dog's so great in other contexts and other times of the day. Great, let's get rid of the crappy stuff right. so you can really enjoy your dog. And, and if anybody's like, you're so mean with a prong collar on my puppy, guess what? You'll have the best behaved jorky, jorky. Jorky. <laughs> Beef jorky. You'll have the best behaved jorky in town and everybody will be like, how'd you get that? And you'll be like, yeah, I put a 2.25 prong on him and I told him like, knock that crap uh -huh. off, walk like this, go to place. And then all of a sudden you got great stuff. Yeah. So anything cool. no that's it cool all right hope Let that helps know how it goes. no hate mail because i said a prong <laughs> thanks so look you're gonna stare stare at him and then look at me and say he's not friendly <laughs> do it like okay. super like ace ventura yeah okay you got it he's not friendly <laughs> he bites <laughs> well my dog's friendly Go ahead. My dog's friendly. <laughs> she goes to dance. Da, da, da. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Take two. She goes to doggy daycare. <laughs> Go ahead. She won't bite. <laughs> okay, this is question number five. This is actually an anonymous question, which is kind of cool and exciting. Just yeah. Do you have tongue. it? Did you already copy it? No. Oh, okay. Um, I was, it was also um, a question that kind of goes along with this. Mm. It's also an anonymous question. Yep. So we're getting some anonymous questions going on. It's mm. kind of fancy. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we won't give away pertinent details in any of, any of these situations, but essentially um, our anonymous viewer says, um, 
they have a foster dog uh, for a rescue. They're basically fostering a dog. Mm -hmm. This this person is a trainer. She trains. I think so. Okay. Um, or she's like heavy duty in the rescue world okay. and like does serious okay, stuff. Okay, cool. So there's a foster dog that she's fostering with a rescue. Not everyone at the rescue is down with the tools. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this dog. They're not down with the tools, so they're more positive only, some of them. Yeah. Um, but if she did positive only with this dog that she's talking about and didn't set down firm boundaries, she and her dog would probably be gonzo, she says. Kaputsky. Yes. Um, so he's an he's a older German shepherd who's never been told no and never had pressure put on him. Eight years old, not, not exactly like grandpa on the No, head. no, yep. but he's just older. Yeah. Um, and then he's it's made him really dangerous mm -hmm. and he's also getting his own way all the time and he massively objects to any corrections and he's possessive over everything <laughs> um so he's only been with her for a little bit of time and and she's crate trained him nice. so he sleeps in there but if not muzzled and he's only ever not muzzled when he's in the crate when he eats and when he's alone with me he has a prong e-collar and leash on he knows how to wait patiently for his food. Um, mm -hmm. He's not food aggressive. But the problem is regarding him growling when he's off muzzle and whether or not it's safe to use the e-collar to correct that. Mm -hmm. With the leash, if I correct him, he goes for the leash and that's not pretty. Um, and then soon he, he just gets bored if she, she doesn't like fight him. Yep. He also growls if I ask for space, you know, He's not quite red zone, but he's and he's not yet shown actual aggression towards me, just possessiveness and making his own rules. He loves to work and he loves to love. Yeesh. So I'm desperate to give him a fighting chance. Um, you know, thank you so much. So he sure sounds red zone to me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think maybe we need to like find a definition of what red, <laughs> red zone, zone means. Like, does it only mean bloodthirsty and like <laughs> killing people? Well, yeah, um, people, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so uh, we can both tackle this, but mm -hmm. I, um, I, have a, I have a couple things that I want to share first of all. So thanks for the anonymous question. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you trusting us to give you some feedback. So here's the first thing, and I'm, I'm going to like kind of throw you a curveball here, right? So the first question is, is this dog a good candidate for adoption? Forget about like your dog training skills, forget about like your goals, forget you about, yeah. right? Forget about like, can I get him to a good spot and he's got all this love and he loves to work? <clears throat> forget about all that. Yeah. Is he a good candidate? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is he a good candidate to safely go in someone else's home and live there and for you to be able to go to sleep at night and not be concerned about what he might do to somebody? Yeah. You can't get him off of a muzzle except for like in very like small context. Otherwise, he's muzzled all the time because you're concerned about him. Nice. That to me sounds like a terrible candidate yeah. for a dog to go to anywhere mm -hmm. except for maybe a highly, highly skilled trainer. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, honestly, those kind of dogs, like project dogs, yeah. Those are the dogs that like trainers that want to cut their teeth and work with really serious heavy cases. Those are good fits. But your your average Joe, your average family, your regular peeps, that that's is a fair. that's a bad fit. Yeah. And and the whole thing is it's on you. Your the responsibility is on you to make that determination mm -hmm. about like, okay, great, we got this guy in here, he's got this, this, and this. Let me see what I can get. Okay, cool. I'm a weekend and I still can't like work with him without safely without the muzzle on because he's so freaking dangerous. He's not red zone, but he's almost there. Yeah. If I correct him on the leash, he comes up the leash. If I take the if I take the muzzle off and correct him with the e-collar, is he going to come after me? Like those are all scary worrisome questions Bad for questions. a big shepherd that you said that you've that you shared has had no rules, no consequences, no pressure put on him and now he feels like he rules the world. Yep. So for me, that feels like a terrible, terrible fit for any kind of, uh, you know, adoption, anything yeah. like that. And obviously you're not the rescue, so, you know, you're not calling the, the shots on that, but man, like, you could get this dog so super far, but after the foster period, the dog goes back to rescue, right, or, or goes to a home, you're gonna have to teach the home what you're doing and if the rescue's not into your methods and and you're kind of like you're kind of stuck like i, I just yeah 
it's a, it's a if you're asking the questions just as like a experience for the future and like okay learning I don't know what's gonna happen yeah. with this dog that's one thing but like the dog loves to work and loves to love there I don't even want to know how you know he loves to love because any dog who's like you can barely get out of a muzzle that's like and really, he's possessive of her yeah yeah I mean, that's, yeah those are all that's all really bad and 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 this is not to slam you because no. we like you but boy like <laughs> we do we do like you but yeah, but but, no, but it's hard sometimes you're in a zone and you're like I just gotta fix this and they're this like this is whoa, such whoa, whoa. it's such a trainer thing yeah. though right yeah. so trainers get like they get the challenge or they get the ego or yeah. they get the can I do this thing or you get into the dog and you're like this dog is right right he's like got all these dog. qualities yeah, yeah. but that's you that's you <laughs> with all these skills you better that's, adopt that that's, dog that's yeah, <laughs> yeah that better become your dog yeah. your right hand man or right hand girl because anywhere else you're putting that dog you're putting people in harm's way with the dog mm -hmm. that's at this place unless I'm going to just add this one caveat yeah. uh, unless within like a week, things change massively, yeah, right? Yeah. I think you've had them for five or six days, probably by the time this comes out, eight you know, days, something like yeah. that. If you share some great stuff and the dog literally makes like a complete, is it a 180 or 360? 180. A complete. I want him back to where he was. Right, 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 okay. <laughs> Let's go 180. If he makes a complete 180, then that's something that you can contemplate with him going to a really great like trainer, somebody with massive experience, yeah. something like that. But I'm telling you, your responsibility isn't to like your ego, it isn't to the dog training world, it isn't to see what can I achieve. Your job, and this is a, and it's such a hard one because I know so many trainers who've gotten caught up in this, your job is to decide hey, this is a dangerous dog. Mm -hmm. And the most responsible thing I can do is let them know this is a dangerous dog mm -hmm. and I don't feel safe with all my experience and him on muzzle and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel safe. You can't send a dog that's like that into a home. Nope. It's, not, it's not right, it's not, it's not ethical, okay. it's not safe, it's not okay. So uh, I wanna answer just the, the one other question you said, you know, like, would it be, and I know I kind of hinted at it earlier, but like, would it be okay um, to correct him on with an e on an e-collar without the muzzle on? And I have no idea. Unless I'm sitting there in the room with that dog, unless I'm working that dog, unless I've, unless I've created a relationship with that dog, I've got no idea whether you're safe. He's possessive of you and there's been any soft stuff where you know how he loves mm. you, I'm telling you, that's a dangerous proposition. If he's already coming back on the prong collar and already like, kind of like fighting with like the leash. polar bear style. Yeah, you don't, yeah. don't mess with the e-collar stuff on that because there's, there's, you want to be really cautious or be really, really skilled with that sort of stuff because it's just, it can be scary. Yeah. Be a lot worse than what you think. And, and here's the thing, you send a dog into a home like that and he bites a kid on the face, or he bites a, a grandmother, or a mom, or a dad, and he injures them severely, and then that's on you, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't mean to play on like the you, heavy card. But like, no, but I, like I'm, I'm, it is on you. Yeah. If you are a trainer, and you green light a dog to go into oh, yeah. a home, you green light the dog. Yeah. it's on you, 100,000%. And so for us, we are super cautious about any dogs that we recommend anywhere, where, wherever they're going, if they're coming through foster, shelter, yeah, rescue yeah. stuff, we're super crystal clear and transparent about like, here's the limitation, here's mm -hmm. the limitation, here's where he's great at, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of homes he'd be good in. I would totally get away from the question about the e-collar correction. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that is the least of your worries. I would take a step back and I would really spend a little time and think, does this dog, this dog sitting in front of me that I'm living, cohabitating with, is he a dog that I feel could be safely uh, moved into a home and that's with, not mine. That's not yours, yeah. that doesn't have the skill sets that you have, and that you could sleep at night knowing that it was gonna be okay. Yeah. That's 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 like that's the real question. it's way it's way more important than any like technique or anything like that. So this once again is not to hard time you, it's to really like encourage and save you from getting yourself into any kind of trouble. And if you're determined to try and see like what you can do 
then the only thing I can suggest is that you work your ass off to find a home that's very, very, very experienced yeah. with people that like whip out like dealing with like rough and tumble shepherds yeah. like all the time. Otherwise, you're, you're putting people in harm's way. Cool. All right. And then I have a little addition. My anonymous question was And we do love you. We love you. Um, my question was on the similar tip, which is basically what does a person do when the dog they foster out of, is out of control and the rescue is against prong and e-collars? Um, if the foster decides to break the rules for the short time they have the dog, does or can this affect the dog in a negative or positive way long term? And morally, ethically, is this horrible? You know? That was the, the anonymous question I got. So it's kind of on the similar, similar bent. So our first anonymous, they, they just know that some people at the rescue aren't into it, but they don't have like strict rules. Yeah. So my second anonymous, if you have strict rules from the rescue you're working with that you can't use these tools, it's not cool to use them. It's morally and ethically wrong. They run a business and they're saying, no, we don't want these. You probably, you might even have to sign a contract. Like do not do that. They're allowed to set their own rules. Of course. Yeah. But find another rescue if you don't want to do that. You know, you got to find find something that actually fits in with you. Now, in terms of it having negative or positive effects in the long term, I, you know, I like balanced training methods, and and I've seen them work positively in the long term. Negatively, how they could work um, is if the dog gets in a really good space, and then things go back, and you know, they the dog goes back to a place where none of that is going on and the dog just gets more confused and overwhelmed with like, okay, what is, where are the rules and all that stuff. So I would just say like, you know, find a different rescue that actually supports what you want to do and foster yeah. those dogs. Yep. Um, yep. We got to wrap up. Yeah. Just remember guys, if you're working at a place where they say these are our rules and you sign on and agree to those rules, then it's unethical for you to break those rules. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't like it, like Laura said, go somewhere else and find someone that will uh, encourage and allow you to Absolutely. use the tools that you believe in. Don't break the rules. Don't be. Don't play underhanded. Yeah. And uh, it's only. Vigilante. It's it's going to come back to bite you. So. All right. All right. Are we guys, out of here? We're out. Boom. Gotta go. From New Orleans. Yep. This is probably the last time for a little bit. Yep. Right. Laura heads home tomorrow. Head home tomorrow. And I head home, what, in a week? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So we'll see you guys back. Yeah, um, see you back in L.A. In, in a week, next week. And I don't want to scare anybody, but it's episode 98. That means two more to go. Two more to go. I hope you I got to get to work. Plans. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. All right. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>